have yeah. Yunus Karim, Minister of Communications, on the line. Minister, so many people today have said that among Mandela's greatest attributes are his ability or were his ability to forgive and to restore. Are you in line with that? Yeah, altogether. I don't think anybody will disagree. His greatest strength was his generosity and capacity to forgive, which I think is what distinguishes him from uh, much of uh, us uh, lesser mortals. Uh, uh, and I think that uh, I heard uh, also on TV fleetingly uh, Archbishop Tutu's tribute, and he interestingly also pointed to the remarkable capacity of Mandela to forgive and referred, for example, to his visit uh, to uh, Mrs. Betsy Fisfoot, having uh, the wives of all the former presidents and prime ministers of this country, the apartheid era, at his house, uh, inviting his jailer to be uh, at his uh, inauguration, and stunningly, uh, Percy Utah, who wanted death penalty for him and his colleagues and comrades, uh, to come and have tea with him. He's utterly remarkable, which is what makes him the universal symbol he is. Well, that's what uh, made Mandela for most people. The fact, whatever he did, he did it with class. Whatever he did, he did it with finesse. And so that the people involved, like, like Percy Utah you mentioned, was the case in point. I mean, he couldn't actually say anything uh, to him, even though he'd been wanting the death penalty for him decades before. Um, do you think that the next generation of politicians are going to have that in Africa? Well, we all, as Archbishop Tutu said not so long ago, need to emulate him, not just politicians, but all of us in South Africa and I think globally. Uh, uh, I think Bill Clinton once said something to the effect that uh, when we see him, uh, we all want to be good. Uh, and that's his great inspiration. And I think, you know, it's not uh, uh, coincidental, if you like, that uh, he loves children or loved children the way he did because uh, it shows his commitment uh, to the future. It shows his sense of hope, uh, his considerable uh, devotion and commitment to children, I think is another symbol or uh, reflection, if you like, of his sense of hope that the future will be better than the current and it's in the children that you invest uh, time and energy. On that note, Minister, there are the doomsayers out there that say that a post mediba world is going to be a very difficult one. What do you believe we're going to see in this post mediba era? Well, nothing substantially different. I think for several months to come, and hopefully even longer, this sense of uh, uh, feeling that we must be good, we must uh, live by the values, uh, the principles that he symbolized and actually reflected in his personal life, we should live by the norms, if you like, of not just him, but Walter Sisulu and that generation of ANC leaders will hopefully linger and persist and become internalized by us for some months to come. As for the skies falling down, no, he himself will be the first to have said, presumably, that that's not true. Uh, in fact, as we all know, uh, midterm in his first five-year term, well, his only five-year term, of course, as president, he had begun to hand over the reins to Thabo and Becky. You'll recall on the eve of in Becky's succession, the president then, uh, you know, there were all these doomsayers saying, look, uh, things are going to collapse, and they didn't. I and mean, to the extent we've uh, uh, faltered since then, uh, it's not really something that can be directly attributable to his absence. He's in fact been out of the public domain for some uh, months, if not years now, and I don't think that anything negative is likely to happen or will happen. What I think will happen is a positive thing, which is for the next few months at least, I think we'll all be more restrained in being uh, uh, wrong as politicians and public representatives more generally. But I think the people more generally in this country, I think, are going to be possibly more uh, committed and, uh, let's say, less uh, restrained from doing anything that they might otherwise have done that's not consistent with the principles and values of our constitution and this new democratic uh, society we're living in. And that was Eunice Karim, Minister of Communications on the line.